Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be escaping our Earth and our solar system to go to the nearest exoplanet to us, known as Proxima b, and talk about something that's not particularly good news, specifically in relation to it being habitable. Let's discuss this and welcome to What The Math. So the date is August of 2016 and everybody in the astronomical community is super super excited because by looking at the closest uh, red dwarf or I guess really the closest star to us known as uh, Proxima b that's actually right there we uh, discovered that there was an exoplanet around it and o not only an exoplanet but an exoplanet that was actually if you were to zoom out here was actually in the so-called um, habitable zone of the uh, parent star known as um, Proxima Centauri. In other words, it is located in the area where you'd expect to have liquid water. And as you just saw from uh, the simulation in the Space Engine, it actually does seem to have liquid water on the surface. With the only difference between this particular uh, exoplanet and our Earth is that, well, it's actually, if you, if you look at it really closely, it's actually always sort of pointing with the same face to its star. In other words, it is actually tightly locked. This side is always exposed to the sun. This side is always dark and cold. Okay, well, that's not too bad, right? The idea here is that, well, maybe just maybe there is some sort of heat redistribution, and so maybe just maybe there is liquid water on the surface. But a very recent uh, study that actually studied this particular system prior to the discovery of Proxima b uh, basically found something not very good. In other words, it, it had some bad news for us in regards to this particular system. They actually discovered that back in March of 2016, uh, there was a, a tremendously large solar flare coming from um, the star Proxima Centauri and that solar flare was essentially 10 times more powerful than anything our sun ever produced. It was so powerful that, well let me see if I can maybe even vi help you visualize this, it was so powerful that the actual star increased both in its luminosity and its brightness for about 10 seconds. And it was blasting the planet this whole time. And then after about 10 or so seconds, it sort of uh, went back to being normal again. Now, okay, 10 seconds is not too bad, right? But here's the thing, though. These flares happen in the system pretty frequently. And over a period of the existence of the system, over a period of billions of years, this means that this particular planet may have actually received so much radiation and so many super highly charged particles that are normally already pretty dangerous on Earth, but would probably be even more dangerous here, that the chance for this particular planet to be as it is right here in the simulation, in other words, being um, habitable looking, having liquid water, temperature of 60 degrees Celsius, and even atmosphere that can potentially even uh, breathe, for all we know, the chance for this is now pretty low. So. The, originally, we thought this planet may look something like this. You know, liquid, beautiful water. There's uh, some sort of a surface, possibly atmosphere. But now, because of the uh, recent discovery, we think that that flare was just way too powerful. There's a very high chance that that flare, unless there's a tremendously powerful magnetic field around this planet, would have actually stripped it of everything. As a matter of fact, there would probably be... Practically no atmosphere or possibly a super thick atmosphere similar to Venus, but most importantly There is probably not going to be a lot of water here. It might actually be completely dry desiccated and in Uninhabitable essentially not friendly to human life So if you were to actually look at the surface again, it would look completely unfriendly to human life now, all of this is still kind of, of course, a speculation, but this particular object offers us a tremendous chance to study such planets. As a matter of fact, uh, we've already discovered several um, red dwarfs that have planets, and one of the most famous ones is our, of course, TRAPPIST-1 system with its seven terrestrial planets. But 
this is the closest one to us and we actually have a really 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 good chance of studying this in detail and basically establishing once and for all of what these objects look like and most importantly what dynamics they actually follow on the surface do they have atmospheres do they have liquid water uh, are they always tidally locked and always face the same sort of side because if that's the case if this is a tidally locked planet it probably would not have a very strong magnetosphere in other words it would probably not have a lot of defense against those solar flares. It has to spin a little bit faster to create more magnetosphere. On the other hand, maybe just maybe it has some sort of a different system for magnetosphere. This uh, particular planet is about 1.3 times more massive than our Earth. So maybe that's what's actually protecting it from those solar flares. And maybe it does look like this. So all of this is still a mystery to us, but the new study really kind of sets us back a little bit in believing that these might be actually habitable and uh, in believing that one day we might be able to call this a new home. And it's not really because we think that um, this uh, planet might not be uh, able to protect itself from those flares. It's really just a combination of things. The fact that it's so much closer to its parent star than Earth. So here, um, it only takes about 11 days for this planet to actually orbit uh, once. Also, on top of that, the solar flares are way, 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 way stronger than uh, the ones around the Sun. And uh, it's tidally locked. And we are not entirely certain what it's made out of. It might not even have a lot of metal inside. So altogether, this really leaves us with um, an exoplanet that's obviously cool, but being a future home for humanity is a big question. But because it's re relatively close to us when uh, compared to other stars, we definitely have to start studying this in a lot more detail. And we have to really, I think, refocus our um, studies and our telescopes essentially on trying to find out as much as we can about this beautiful object that is relatively close to our planet earth and in space engine you can even detect it from our planet by basically looking in the direction of uh, proxima b and then zooming in and seeing a little speck that is going to appear in a few seconds so this is kind of all i wanted to talk about in this video and i know it's not a super positive uh, topic but Honestly, if we can discover what uh, these unusual planets are all about, we're going to be able to actually establish um, guidelines for finding future Earths in the future. Okay, so basically what this means is that by studying Proxima b and identifying all of the parameters of this unusual um, exoplanet, we'll be able to create um, various guidelines for what makes a, a planet habitable, but also what would make this planet and other planets around Red Dwarfs potentially habitable for humanity? And you can kind of see it slowly moving around its star. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully you learned something from it, and hopefully now you know a little bit more about Red Dwarfs, about uh, their exoplanets, and most importantly, about the closest um, exoplanet to us known as Proxima b. In the next video, we'll talk about something else, but for now, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.